If you've been watching the channel a while, you'll know that I'm a big fan of good quality products from reputable brands at a good price. I don't get super excited by the hyper light, hyper expensive stuff, nor do I get overly excited by the really cheap stuff out of China. What I like is when a brand that's got a great, great reputation makes a product that's got just as much performance but a much more reasonable price. And today I want to talk about Magura. Now, I haven't been paid to do this video. All the stuff here you see on the table, I own these brakes, I bought them on my own money. This is stock from our shop, stuff that we fit to customers' bikes. And this review is based on my own experience of running these brakes and also fitting these brakes to lots and lots of customers and their feedback. So we're in York today at the top of a big hill. Seems like an ideal time to talk about brakes. Don't get freaked out by my Magura shirt. I'm not sponsored by them. I just brought a bike that matches my wicked brakes. So the reason I like Magura brakes and the reason why I think some of you might like it is how they actually work. You see, they have like a little bit of a spring to them and a fair bit of what they call free stroke. This means that my hand can rest one finger and when I'm on the brakes, I can feel the lever push back. It gives me that really strong sense of confidence that my brakes are there when I need them. And then a very, very tight bite point. So the bite point is very definite. You can feel the brakes catch. And then all that modulation. And that's what I like about these, is that you've got that constant feeling that they're there for you when you're ready. A bite point, you know they're working. And then you've got loads of modulation after that. Just to compare, this is my friend Sally's bike. She runs this Shimano Dior XT. Really popular brake. Loads of people really love them. This one is very, very similar. So loads of free stroke. You can really get your one finger wrapped around that brake lever and then a very definite bite point, but the modulation isn't as long. So the modulation is very, very short in the lever as well. So once you're on the brake, you need to be quite fine control with it. So in contrast to that, SRAM brakes tend to not have such a definitive bite point. So some people call it a soggy bite point, but loads and loads of modulation. You can really pull that lever right to the bar and really hang on to the handlebars on the other side of that hope brakes have got not an awful lot of free stroke so once you touch the brake they're almost on but then loads of modulation after that you see it's all personal preference now you know now i want to talk about these brakes as anyone that's running mountain biking or flat bar brakes i think these now represent some of the best performance for the money that you can get it all kind of started when magura were a very top end brand they had the mt7s the mt5s really expensive really good high quality brakes but everyone overlooked them because they were so expensive and then they started to roll their product range down if you like and it started with this brake set this is the mt trails these have been out on the market for a while and this is their first sort of look at trying to bring that fantastic lever feel and braking performance to a bigger audience and this is the set so for 180 quid you get all of this in here you have a front brake with a four pot caliper and a rear brake with a two pot caliper now the big news for me is this lever so one of the main reasons i like magura brakes is this lever shape for one finger braking this is just the best lever shape i think it's very very similar to the shimano system um, gives you a really good accurate feel it really feels like your finger is hooked around there you know where your brake lever is and they're lovely and lightweight as well the calipers themselves the big four pot caliper that goes on the front brake is so powerful now the mt trail set comes with a one piece brake pad which you can soon swatch out for the little four piece ones and they're magnetic as well so they're super easy to change so this caliper is exactly the same as you'll find on the mt7s and the mt5s gives you loads and loads of braking power. On the back of these, you just had the simple two pot caliper. Now, here it is without the brake pads. It's actually a nice little lightweight set. That's what same set they use on their cross country brakes. But the pad size, you actually get a pretty large contact area with this. So they're still significantly more powerful than some of the sets you get from Shimano or SRAM, for instance, so a lovely big pad. But what was happening is that people were buying this set from us and we were removing this and then buying an aftermarket four pot caliper. So we had four pots front and back and that seemed to be the popular situation. So we have tons of these in the shop now if anybody wants a two pot because we've done that swap so many times. And eventually Mugura listened every single time that the rep came to see us. I was like, come on, this is a no brainer. Just make a set of four pot calipers because the set that had it had the big sort of two finger brake lever, which nobody wanted. So you'd either buy that set, which is overpriced and then have to change the levers. What a ball ache. Now for 250 quid, which I think is an amazing price, considering that a Shimano Dior 
four pot is about 90 quid per end. This is 250 quid for front and back. And most importantly, disc rotors. And this is important because Magura use a two millimeter thick rotor. Now on here it's written that the minimum wear limit is 1.8 millimeters. And that is the where Shimano and SRAM actually start. So they start at 1.8 millimeters thick and considered worn out at 1.5. So it's really important that you use Mugura rotors. If you really have to use Shimano ones at a pinch, I experimented with it, it does work, but not for very long before, before you start losing your bite point. So you get those, a big 203 for the front, 180 for the rear. You also get your brake mounting hardware and all your hose kit as well, so you can cut these down. And with these, you get the Magura bright yellow little details here. And you can actually flick these out and change these. You can get almost every single color. So if you want to, you can color match your bike. So I've been running Magura brakes for a while now and fitting them to customers' bikes. Now, a couple of things that I like and dislike about them. First of all, fantastic value, fantastic performance. Everyone comes back raving about them. In the workshop, they are so easy to work on. You know, cut the hose down, fit that hardware. They are so easy to bleed. I'm not even gonna show you that on the video because there's so many videos out there. Now, the downsides are, is that these levers can be a little bit fragile. Now, because the levers are made of this plastic type material, the threads on these bolts are quite coarse. Uh, they need a little bit more care. So pay attention to the torque settings, don't over tighten them. Also, the thing that home mechanics get wrong is the little bleed port here that over tighten it and strip this out really only needs to be like one newton meter. It's not gonna go anywhere, I promise. One newton meter is absolutely fine. The other thing that people really get wrong with this, and it should be in the instructions a lot more clearly than it is to be fair, is in a situation where your brake pads are worn down or maybe you've used them with the wrong rotors, and you've bled the system with the pads and the rotors in place rather than the bleed blocks, it's quite easy to overfill the system. Now, if you then go in with a pad separating tool and try and separate these out to replace the brake pads, what you can do is you can blow the seal here. Now, this is true of nearly all brakes, but I think because of the unique sort of two millimeter rotor and the sort of setup there, I think it's probably more common than you get with Shimano brakes. So it's just worth noting in the video, I think. So with that, I think all we need to do is sort of congratulate Magura for trying to put out a product that is great value in this sort of current situation where prices are going absolutely ballistic. 250 quid for an entire set of brakes, including rotors that perform really well, have still got Magura's great brand reputation, service, backup, you, nearly every single shop now can sell Magura because they're part of the Bosch family. I think it's one of those recommendations that almost falls into the no-brainer category. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Have you used these brakes? Are you considering a new set of brakes? Have you got a different experience to mine that you want to add to the argument? It's all good. Get it down in the comments. But for now, see you on the next one.